Well, welcome to the Champions Club, where we develop winners through the Word of God. Come on in, come on in. You have a seat at the table with us. We're glad that you're here on this Wednesday night, the first Wednesday in February. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to get on your phone, and I need you to hit the like and the share button. Tell your friends that we're here. We're here talking about the Word, and we're here to develop the champion within you. It is a great night. Uh, as we have some friends here, you have a seat at the table. We have our friend Stephanie, we have Ty, we have Deacon Carl here, aka Buster, and we're going to dive into the word. So, are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Ready. ready? All right, all right. First thing I want to do is uh, I want to give you all something. I want to give you something. I think um, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you this, <laughs> Carl. Right. I'm going to give Stephanie, I think I'm going to give you this. Okay. I'm going to give you this right here. That's about right. Uh, Ty, I'm going to give you this. This is for Thanks. you. Thank you. Uh, but y'all put them off to the side. Okay. Do not open them. Hold them and keep them on the table. Okay. Keep them on the table. Uh, and for you all online, I have something for you, but you can't go anywhere. I'm going to give you the instructions on what is for you. So tonight, as you see, uh, I've given our guest here gifts, and tonight we're going to simply talk about being gifted. We're talking about gifts, gifts tonight. Um, I believe it's safe to say that uh, most of us want to establish a meaningful life, right? Um, I know each of you all, right? <laughs> and I think I know each of you all pretty well. Um, and I think we all want to have a, a meaningful life. Um, Deacon Carl, we know you just retired from your, uh, from working for the man, as Ty said <laughs> earlier. Yes. Um, but I saw that the average person who works during their lifetime, they work an average of, Americans actually average 34.4 hours a week. Now, most of us work more than that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so they say that uh, those that work throughout their life average in an amount of 90,000 hours mm. logged mm. in at work. If you ain't working, it's time to get to work for mm. somebody that's out there. Um, but in our space, as believers, as people who are, we call ourselves Christians, um, and me as a pastor, I have to kind of rethink the climate concerning the workplace and concerning our faith and how it looks like you know we all are professionals uh many of you all are professionals or aiming to be a professional and here in 22 things are evolving the workplace is evolving it's going faster and faster and for some people like <laughs> deacon carl he's probably like i don't care how fast it's going i'm retired <laughs> right and many of you all are out there you are retired but as a pastor as a leader we have to look at um we look at the boomers, one, group one, group two. We look at Gen X. I think that's us. I mean, we're in there. We're in the X, Gen X, the millennials who are really dominating the, the major workspace um, from, from my eyes, from what I see. And then Gen Z, who we are witnessing the kids, my kids, they're, they're, I believe they're going to change the world. That's just what's happening mm -hmm. with tech mm -hmm. and with all the, um, the knowledge that they have. Uh, but either way it goes, we have to look at the fact that we all have natural gifts and spiritual gifts. And we have to examine the intersection where um, I believe the natural gift and the spiritual gift meet or where our calling and our career mm. meet up because it is a fact that they will um, intersect at some point or another. But I have a question for all of you all out there and for you guys here. The question is, what do you believe you're gifted to do? Uh, so if you're watching tonight, we want to know. I want to know. I'm going to ask these uh, beautiful people here. I'm asking you to type it in the comments. What are you gifted to do? Uh, be honest. Now, whether it's your opinion or whether it's fact, just put it in the chat. We want to see. We want to see what you're gifted to do. I want to ask you guys. Ty, what do you believe you are gifted to do? What is your gift in life? I think my gift is management. Yes, um, it's a great gift. I think I manage not only at work, but I think that God gives us everything that we have. Everything comes from Him. We manage everything, our money, our time, our job, 
and any passion that I have for anything, I put everything in it. And so I'm, I'm more of a compliance person. That's why I say management. So I'm making sure things are right, right. and things aren't compliant. And I'm pointing out things that are wrong. Right. I do know that about you. Yes. You are a manager. You will let us know when we're out of pocket. Um, Carl, what do you believe your gift or gift, one of your major gifts is? Um, I believe one of my gifts um, is to encourage, to encourage others, to support, and so on. Um, as in uh, the Bible, like one of the spiritual gifts is it, to exhort, and I, which means to encourage, and I feel that's what I can do. I've helped several people that have been down and out, and I can talk to them and encourage them, let them know through God they can do anything. That's good, that's good. What about your natural gifts? Right. Well, my, my natural gifts, uh, I would say I have a gift um, that allows me to do architecture. And now it, 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 it's not something that I feel I was born with, but I feel like um, I was put in the right position and I saw architecture and I'm like, this is for me. And then I worked toward getting, getting into it. So I feel like the Lord has used me, uh, which he has in several different projects that I've worked on. Uh, uh, Many of our churches. Churches, everything, yeah. you know. Uh, medical building, surgery centers, so forth and so on. So I believe that's one gift that God has uh, given to me. That's sweet. That's sweet. What about you, Stephanie? This is a good question. <laughs> I think if I were to summarize a gift, I would probably say I, I believe I'm gifted in the space of expression and connection mm -hmm. in various ways. That's so good. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. All, yeah. all of those are amazing. Um, I know many of us know Tons of people who are gifted. Some people are gifted to write. Mm -hmm. uh, some people are gifted to sing. Some people are not gifted to sing. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> gifts to build and design, um, to organize, manage. Gifts to lead, the mm -hmm. gift of leadership. Everybody is not a great leader. Uh, I think leadership is a gift. Um, some are gifted to uplift. Some are gifted to encourage. Some are gifted to speak. Um, and all of these gifts, they require specific practice, and we have to nourish the gift. Um, I saw this amazing quote by Steve Harvey. I thought, you know, I think he's a brilliant mind. I think he's gifted in so many ways. Um, but he said, your talent is what you are paid for. Your gift is what you are uh, made for. Mm -hmm. and I, I figured that's pretty good. I know when mm -hmm. I say, go ahead, Reverend Steve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that, that, that's amazing. That's an amazing thing. But not everyone comes into their gifts or their calling easily. Mm -hmm. um, I can speak for myself um, when it comes to the calling um, that God has placed on my life. I didn't stumble into it easily. When I think of the natural gifts um, that I have, I had to work toward them to polish them to build them to be able to be beneficial, not only for myself, but for other people. But in the Bible, I want to read a scripture. I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Um, you all, it's on the screen for you. Um, and it says, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded so that you may pray, right? Be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. First of all, when it comes to dealing with our gifts, spiritual and natural, I believe we got to pray about it. Yes. you got to pray about it because you want to make sure you're in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, not wasting your time. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. We don't want to waste time uh, trying to develop something that is not in us. And I know a lot of people that do that. They waste their time. So prayer when done right, I believe it replaces the self-focus because many times we want to do what we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not sometimes gifted to do what we want to do. I know many people, again, we could talk about singers. I may talk about singing a lot because we know singers. A lot of people, they, they great shower singers and they bless themselves, but they well, don't bless nobody else. Well. Right? So that's just a fact of something that happens. So when we pray, we get into a space of more god focus than we are uh, rather than being self-focused, all right? Um, 
you know, a rhetorical question is when is the last time you asked God, what is it that you want me to do? Mm. What is mm. it that you want me to do for mm. your kingdom? And I think that's a valid question that everybody, uh, especially those that claim to be believers, they, sh they should ask themselves. Um, we have so many desires and things, but many times we step out of bounds, mm -hmm. you know, and waste that time when God has something special desired for us, all right? Let me continue on in that same passage of Scripture. Verse 8 says, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Verse 9 uh, of that chapter says, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. See, we miss sometimes the little key things in the Scripture. Offer hospitality without grumbling. And verse 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others mm -hmm. as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I don't know about you, but I want to be a steward, mm -hmm. a great steward of what God gives me. Um, and so we find that our abilities should be used to serve others. Uh, everything you all shared tonight. And what you all share in the comments, I believe that it is for you to serve other people. We have to serve those in our churches. Yes. We have to serve those in our communities. We have to serve those in our families and many, many other places that we go. Uh, I believe that God will give us an opportunity for our, the gift that he has given us to be put on display. But one of the things I've come to learn, even as we look at these gifts, your gift, that's uh, that's going to be coming soon online and these gifts that are here. And that is all gifts come in many different shapes and sizes, right? Many different shapes and sizes. And, but everybody has something good to give. Everybody. Everything that was mentioned uh, here tonight, we all have something good to give. But we have to find it and then we have to then use it, put it to work. All right? So I want to jump to... Romans chapter 12, right? Verse 3. I'm going to read verse 3 through 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 3 through 8. And it says, Paul says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, this is important when it comes to gifts, y'all. So make sure you understand what the word says. I did not write this. He says, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, mm -hmm. but rather think of yourself with sober, we used that word last month, sober meaning clear, sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you, all right? So, yeah, self-esteem is important, but it's got to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I know some, so many people that have self-esteem, it's, it's haughty, it's, mm -hmm. it's puffed up, mm -hmm. it's rooted in evil, it's rooted in, rooted in self-glory, uh, but we have to make sure our self-esteem is healthy. Everybody needs it, and it has to be healthy. And so you got to evaluate yourself. Self-evaluation is so important when it comes to knowing the root of your self-worth. And I'm a believer that my self-worth is in the fact that I know an amazing God. And that's what we should know. Our value comes from God. It's not about what rank you are in specific circles or, or, or groups, but our rooted value is in Jesus Christ. All right, verse 4 said, it says, For just as much of us has one body with many members, excuse me, for just as each of us, excuse me, has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, though many, we form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Verse 6 says, we have different gifts. Make sure you understand that. We have different gifts at this table, all of us, those watching. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If, this is where it gets in detail, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, 
do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it. One thing I'm understanding when I read this is that it's, one person can't have all the gifts. <laughs> you know, many times yes. individuals, we act like we can do everything, mm -hmm. everything. We have everything. This is just a fact as God distributes things. He said, and these members do not have all the same function. That's what the scripture said in verse 4, right? Uh a demonstrative prophet. I don't know when the last time you've been to a revival and heard your favorite prophet so so demonstrative. Uh, they, they, they may be great in prophecy, but they may not be a good counselor. Well. Just like you can be a pastor but not be a good manager of finances or a good, uh, or a good counselor. You might be able to preach. You may not know how to talk to people individually. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes as we're developing these things, at the, uh, the reality is we have to understand that we don't have to do it all because we can't do it all because we don't have everything mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. So I'm thankful. I'm so grateful for individuals that are different from me. I'm so grateful that I have people around me that are different, that have various gifts that are on display. And this, I want to say this for everybody watching tonight, I don't care what church you go to, who your pastor is, this is for every church. This is how God's church works, through the variety of gifts that have been distributed by him for his work, for the kingdom. And this is the motor of the church. You know, you, you, know you have those people in church that try to do everything. We can't do everything. That's a horrible, horrible I guess I don't know if I could say it's a horrible church to be at. That's tough. Mm -hmm. When one person is trying to do everything, but the motor of the church is the operation of the various gifts that are given to various people. And they, they're not given to everybody that looks the same. That's another thing we have to understand. Some people that, don't, that, that didn't grow up like you or doesn't necessarily think like you, God has given them something specific for their area. And this is what brings a healthy balance to a church, and that creates what I believe uh, a healthy church, right? Mm -hmm. So when we look at things in kingdom work, we have to dedicate our gift to God's service. So the things we mentioned, the, the spiritual things that we mentioned tonight, that we mentioned online, we have to make sure that we use them for God's service. Now, let's dive into the spiritual gifts. I want to go to 1 Corinthians. I'm reading a lot, y'all. I, I want to give it to you tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 4, all right, as we talk about spiritual gifts. We'll start at verse 4. We're going to read to verse 11. Write it down, y'all, at home if, if you want to read it later. It says, there are, and I'm reading NIV, it says, there are different kinds of gifts. Understand that, y'all. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them, Okay? There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, we're talking about these spiritual gifts here. They come from one place. They don't come from uh, uh, the, the A side of heaven and the B side and office room C. Listen, they come from the same place. God gives the gifts. He distribute, distributes them as he sees fit, right? God is totally involved in giving and using and empowering the gifts that we have, the spiritual gifts that we have, right? So verse 7, let's get into it deeply here. It says, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Those are two different things. we got to dive into that one day, the wisdom and the knowledge. Verse 9 says, to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, see, he's skipping people. He's giving one, I'm giving you this and I'm moving on. I'm going to somebody else. He says, to uh, another, distinguishing between spirits, all right? Uh, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And all these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them 
to each one just as he determines. Now, let's dive into this <laughs> pretty much here. You do not get to choose your spiritual gift. It's something we got to think about. We do not get to choose our spiritual gifts. God knows the area in which we can usefully use the gifts that he has given us. This is not the golden correct. This is not your favorite uh, uh, buffet in Vegas, uh, the Rio with the crab and stuff, if you know what I'm saying, where you can go and just pick whatever you want. At the end of the day, God gives us these gifts. And uh, if the, the reality is if the spiritual gifts are so powerful and he tries to tell us, he teaches us about using them for good, uh, and he wants us to use them wisely, then what does it mean if those spiritual gifts are misused? Because people misuse spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. There are people that come to church and they, they you want to know why there's a lot of chaos sometimes? Because people are misusing the gifts that were mentioned. And if they're mis uh, applied or misused, then I believe they can have a very dark side. Mm -hmm. I know many people that have, I've been in church all my life, <laughs> right? <laughs> all my life. And I've seen so many things and people misuse things. And later down the road, you see the damage from them misusing the gifts that God has given them. And then sometimes it's because we abuse the spiritual gifts. And there are individuals that do that. But when God gives you a gift, and tells you what to do with it, you got to use it for his glory, mm -hmm. not for vain glory. Mm -hmm. Vain glory. Sometimes people do many things in vain glory. I see people speaking tongues in vain glory. Wow. Uh huh. I, I don't think, I don't know if y'all ready for that tonight, but I'm not going to dive into that. People misuse the gifts for their own vain glory. And it's not glory to God, but it's really glory to oneself. So we have to beware. Of individuals. Beware of individuals that misuse the spiritual gifts, use them for manipulation, uh, for power, for control. That is rooted in the devil's thinking. It's rooted in evil. So we find that even as we uh, experience the great gifts that God has given us, the spiritual gifts, we have to understand that we have to manage the gift with wisdom. Manage the gift with care and with love, the gifts that he gives. And you can't, listen, don't get mad at God because he didn't give you what sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so has. No, no, no. We have to utilize what God mm -hmm. gives us. Be happy with it. Mm -hmm. Don't feel less than because we don't have the same gift as other people. See, one of the things that I've seen in church, people try to manipulate somebody to do something that only God mm. can do in their life. They need to do this. No, maybe God doesn't want them to do that. Maybe God, that, that's not who God called them. He says, I have a different gift. The scriptures do not lie. And so we have to trust what God has said. Now, we got to talk about the, the, uh, uh, the natural gifts. But wait, I, I, we got, we, we've been here 30 minutes. We've been here almost 30 minutes, and we have to stop. we got to get ready to go. I want you, as you are watching now, as you're preparing, I want you to consider the spiritual gifts that God has given you. Let me tell you something. Don't try to force nothing that God hasn't given you. That is a fact. Many people try to force things. You cannot force uh, what God has not given you. And people in church, we got to stop trying to force individuals mm -hmm. in the places that maybe God is not calling them to. Mm -hmm. Maybe God has not called them to be a receiver of a, partic a, per a particular excuse me, gift. But when we trust God and trust his process, mm -hmm. everything is all right. Then... We can, as we get the gifts, we can open them up and use them. Now, you ain't going to open the gifts today. Mm. No, you're not opening your gift today. Uh, there's more for us to talk about, but you got to make sure you come back to our next time. We are to be continued. But before we leave tonight, I want to just tell you all this. No matter what challenges you have, as you study these scriptures that we read, they're, they're posted in the chat, I, I want you to consider the gifts that you have. If you feel less than because someone said something to you, you know that goes around a lot in our churches. If you feel less than uh, because someone said you need to be doing this and you haven't done this, listen, when we're talking about the spiritual gifts, the Bible tells us that God is the distributor of them and God will do things in his time. But all we have to do is open up our heart, be ready and willing to receive what he has for us. So I just want to pray for you all that are watching tonight. 
and us that are sitting here at the table that even as we go forward in life and in the days ahead and the months ahead, whatever amount of time we have left, that God will use us for his glory and that these spiritual gifts will be happy about them, will be excited about them, and will use them in the way that God has called us to use them. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight for those that are here, those that are watching, God. I thank you for the gifts that you have given us, the spiritual gifts, God, that you have blessed us with, and the natural. Father, my prayer is that we learn about the gift, that we learn how to use the gifts that you've given us, and that our eyes are open to every opportunity that you place in front of us to bless somebody with the gifts that you have given us, Father. We know that these gifts don't just bless individuals, but they also bless us, the owner of the gift, the one that's holding on to the gift. God, we thank you because you have new gifts. You have fresh gifts for everybody. And I say thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. God, as we nourish the gift, God, as we manage and as we protect the gift, bless us in the name of Jesus that we'll be used for your glory, so that you can say, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray. We want to see y'all in two weeks. Make sure to be back for part two. Hey, friends, if tonight's Champions Club blessed you, do me a favor. Send it to somebody that you know it can be a blessing to. All you got to do is share it or click the link and copy it and just text it to them. Let's get the word out. If you would like to sow into what Greater Emmanuel Temple is doing here in Linwood, we have four ways for you to do so. First, you can give on our mobile app. Just type Greater Emmanuel Temple into your app store, hit download, and then give. Next, you can give online at our new website at www.my-get.org forward slash donate. Or you can give on Cash App at dollar sign get fam. Lastly, you can give by texting GetFam to 1-888-364-4483. Thank you for your gift. We look forward to seeing you online or in person at our weekly services. God bless you. Did you miss last week's service or would like to stay up to date with all of our pastor sermons? You can now on our posted social links through our new website. Go check it out at my-get.org. Not only can you catch up on services you've missed, but you can also have insight on all of our upcoming events and access all of our church's resources. If you have not yet, go visit the site today.